Hello geographers, today's case study is the River Tees, an example of a UK river landscape for OCRB, geography for inquiring minds. It fits into the specification here, so a case study of one river basin to look at the processes um, and how they're influenced by geology and climate and human activity management, how that works in combination with those processes to impact on the landscape. So where is the River Tees? It's in the northeastern part of England, and you can see it here on the map. Its source is high up in the Pennines in the west, and the river flows eastwards into the North Sea. The source of the River Tees lies on Cross Fell in the Pennines, which is 893 metres above sea level, and rainfall here is over 2,000 millimetres a year. Why does this area need protecting? It's got a long history of flooding. It's home to a large population of people and lots of industries, all requiring a reliable supply of water. It's managed to provide a water supply and control flooding. And the Cow Green Reservoir was built in 1970 to provide water for the growing industries on Teesside. It's a regulating reservoir, storing water in times of plenty and releasing enough for the needs of industry in times of lower flow. So these are some of the landforms. This is actually the river going from the upper course all the way down to the lower course where um, industry is located there on the estuary on the mouth of the river. So in that upper course, you've got waterfalls, rapids and V-shaped valleys. And obviously, as it flows into the middle course of the river, you've got meanders like famous meander of Yarm. And then you've got in the lower course, the estuary. So if we look at like the landforms that have been created and where they are, that's the source of the River Tees at Cross Fell, 893 metres above sea level, um, located on the Pennines. That's a lovely image of high force taken from the air, the waterfall, the famous waterfall there, um, again in the upper course of the river. And then in the lower course, we um, can see um, Yarm, the meander of Yarm with the bridge and the Tees estuary as well. So if we go all the way back and look at the upper course, this is the formation of a V-shaped valley. You can see those important processes of vertical erosion, weathering mass movement to form this V-shaped valley. And in the upper course, it has hard impermeable rocks. Here, vertical erosion has formed a V-shaped valley. The valley cross section is steep sided and V-shaped and the long profile has a steep gradient. The river is turbulent and clear, often stained brown by the peat, which covers the moorlands, which you might remember from the photograph on the previous slide. So this is the moorlands, um, you can see, um, very near to the source of Crossfell up on the beautiful Pennines. So this is very um, characteristic of an upper course um, river, very small channel, you can see the angular, large angular rocks and very low discharge. You can also see those interlocking spurs and how the river is winding its way around them. Again in the upper course, um, we have waterfalls and high force is the largest waterfall in England at 21 metres high. The bottom diagram shows how it has formed with specific reference to high force. So windsill is that tough igneous hard rock um, and then it's um, on top of the softer land limestone. So an area of hard igneous rock called windsill or windstone is located above a layer of soft rock, sandstone and shale, and together they create this impressive waterfall. It's a visitor attraction with lots of walks. People come, you know, you can really sort of see actually why it's so impressive and why it would attract people. And you can see that windsill, windstone sticking out and um, that hard rock there. You also have interlocking spurs. Um, the River Tees flows over hard impermeable rocks. Vertical erosion has formed these classic V-shaped valleys um, like interlocking spurs close to cauldron snout here. In the middle course, the meanders, uh, the meanders start to appear. So the river goes from vertical erosion to a more lateral sideways erosion and creating this large floodplain. So lateral erosion takes over um, and meanders in the lower course are much larger 
as you get so from the middle to the to the lower course. Oxbow lakes have formed in some areas and past flooding um, can be seen in the natural levees that have formed at the side of the river. You can see here on the map, this is the middle section. You can see those meanders, those bends. And obviously over time, those meanders will become narrower and narrower and eventually join. So this is Yarm. In the lower course of the river, the River Tees loses energy, so deposits sediment. And over hundreds of years, this has created the shape of the river and low-lying floodplains that you can see. Near Yarm, the meanders in the lower course are much larger and oxbow lakes have formed. In this area, there are also levees which have formed when the river's flooded. The River Tees is a very large estuary um, as it goes out to sea with mudflats and sandbanks which support wildlife in the area and sites like seal sands are protected areas. So this is that large estuary, you can see lots of industry here, um, but there's also parts of it that support lots of wildlife. So how has human activity influenced the geomorphic processes in this um, landscape? It's got a lot going on. There's transport and settlement has been an important routeway for centuries. Towns like Yarmo, their existence to trading on the river. Cow Green Reservoir, supplies um, the city of Middlesbrough with its water supply. Sheep farming in the upper course where you saw the Pennines near Cross Fell. And there's lots of tourism. You've got the Pennine Way, High Forest Waterfall, for example. And then there's the industry. So the wide flat valley floor and the tidal estuary have been extensively developed for heavy industries, including steel, which is recently finished, oil, gas and petrochemical industries, which are still there. So the Tees Barrage is an example of management that has happened in um, and around this area. It was completed in 1995, cost 54 million pounds. The 22 kilometer stretch of the river between Yarm and Stockton is now kept permanently a high tide. So the water is fresher and cleaner because it doesn't mix with that salt water in the lower estuary, it reduces the risk of flooding. This followed a catalyst for £500 million worth of um, investment in offices, housing, educational, leisure and, and shopping industries. They also dredged the lower stretches of the Tees and they continue to do so to help improve navigation by maintaining a really deep channel so that ships can move through. They cut off meanders. In 1810, the Tees Navigation Company cut across the neck of the Mandel route loop, a large meander near Stockton on Tees. The new route shortened the river by four kilometres, so it allows the water to move fast along the channel, reducing the flush risk and getting the water out to sea. Yarm's flood defence, the new flood defence scheme cost £2.1 million. It has reinforced concrete walls with floodgates, earth embankments, gabions, those cages with pebbles inside to hold back and make a wall that stabilises the um, riverbank. Fishing platforms, street lighting and replanting to improve the environment for people too. You've got improved flood warning systems and a new development has been discouraged. So building on low lying and flood prone land is completely discouraged. This is a little summary um, just to show that river catchment and where that's all happening. You could pause it here and take a screenshot of that or um, use the original PowerPoint. So here's an exam question. And when you look at it, you'd be like, oh, my goodness, that's actually quite a challenge to, to put your initial thoughts and ideas together. So discuss case study is the landscape of the UK River Basin. So obviously the River Tees in the northeastern part of England. Discuss the influence of geology and the formation of river landforms within your chosen river basin. So you would choose the River Tees for this one. And you're gonna look at geology and how that has an impact on river landforms. So hopefully the one that comes to mind is high force and the um, variation in geology there between the hard rock and the soft rock. Now, in order for you to get six marks for this, you have to be specific. So you're gonna to have to know those details about your um, chosen landform. Pause the video here and have a go at that question. See what you come up with. Here's the mark scheme for um, that question. Now you're aiming for a level three, obviously, and this 
you know, at this level, your answer will demonstrate a thorough knowledge of the geology and the landforms in the chosen UK river basin. That's your assessment objective number one. So showing that knowledge with a thorough understanding of the influence of geology and the formation of river landforms within the chosen river basin. So that is your understanding. And it'll be shown by including well-developed ideas. So if you look at this example of what that means, in the upper course of a river where there is a layer of hard rock, e.g. dolerite, overlying a layer of soft rock limestone, the vertical erosion processes will wear away the soft rock more quickly, deepening the riverbed and creating a steep drop called a waterfall. You could talk there about undercutting and the processes of hydraulic action and abrasion. The softer rock is eroded more quickly, creating an overhang of harder rock. This happens at high force waterfall on the River Tees. So, if you apply your understanding of windstone and the soft sandstone and shales that are make up the soft rock, you could even draw a diagram here to illustrate that. Really make sure that you talk about those processes, introduce where high force is and the river that it flows along. Um, you could talk about the gorge as well that has been formed. That is also an example of a landform. Now, this is um, just a summary of what the examiner said in 2018, I believe this paper was taken from. It wasn't answered well, this question, and I'm not really that surprised. It's an incredibly challenging question. Um, so case study choice made a big difference. It was possible to reach those six marks using any case studies. And the best responses tended to focus on the formation of waterfalls and the role of geology and speed of erosion and the formation of landforms like overhangs and um, plunge pools. But there, there were opportunities to also describe um, perhaps um, meanders, but actually very, very difficult to do that. So I hope that's been useful. Um, go back over, watch this video again to make sure that you know everything that you can about the River Tees. Thanks for watching.